Welcome to another episode of Hemp Barons. Hello, everyone. I'm Dan Humiston, and not only do we have another great guest on today's show, but we also have a big surprise. Hemp Barons has a new host. Yep, I'm handing over the mic to one of the world's foremost hemp authorities and just an all-around beautiful person. I can promise you that she is so much better than I'll ever be, and she's going to make this show great. So let's not waste any more time talking. Let's join my conversation with Chris Fonts from the Hemp Exchange and meet the new Hemp Barons host. Hi, Chris. Welcome to Hemp Barons. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Well, we have an exciting show today, Chris. I have a new host for the Hemp Barons show. I convinced Joy Beckerman, who a lot of our listeners will remember, was on two shows, two of our early shows. And I convinced Joy to take over because, I mean, who better to, to host the Hemp Barons show than Joy Beckerman? So, Chris, you're her guinea pig. You're going to be her first person to interview. Joy, welcome to the show. Thank you. So it's a privilege and a pleasure on so many on so many levels. Chris, I'm excited to think you're my first interviewee. I'm excited to start. Yeah, I feel overly privileged to have this ability and opportunity to be your first interview. This is fantastic. I appreciate it. Well, I'm going to step back. I'm going to be a fly on the wall on this one. There's so much to talk about with the Hemp Exchange. Holy cow. I'm on the website right now. <laughs> Everyone, buckle your seatbelts because this is going to be a, not another great interview. So I'm going to be the fly on the wall. You guys go for it. I'll catch you guys at the end of the interview. Great. Thanks, Dan. Thank you so much, Dan. Well, Chris, the hemp exchange, really filling gaps and chopping the wood and carrying the water, so to speak, for the building of this promising emerging hemp economy that we have in the United States. Yeah, thank you. We're talking about a platform that you have built. Gosh, it's wonderful. A place to buy and sell hemp farmers, hemp processors, and product manufacturers with only verified business truly building the supply chain here. First, can you tell us what gave you the idea to start the Hemp Exchange? What was the inspiration? Yeah, great question. So, um, you know, truth be told, I had an, uh, an affiliate in the, in the industry already um, who I'd have previous mm -hmm. business experience with. And um, I have to give credit where credit was due. Um, they identified the need. I've been following the cannabis space on and off for several years, but hadn't quite dove deep enough into hemp at the time to really see the problems that industry experts were experiencing. And so uh, th this other group in doing their business had realized, just like everyone else, that uh, purchasing and selling product is one of the most painful experiences in the entire industry right now. And so they kind of had this thought like, man, I wish I could just go to a marketplace where someone was already vetted. So when I'm looking at product, I know the product is actually real. Like simple concept, but that doesn't exist. And you end up spending hours on the phone, hours in due diligence trying to figure out who's real, what's real. And so they approached me and said, you know, with your background, with our existing relationship, how do you feel about this project? And I was very excited. It hits a lot of nerves for me personally. And I dove in headfirst. This is so fantastic. And and when we talk about verified businesses and and you state here, you know, state and federal licensure is verified where it's required. Do you folks have a legal team or legal staff to help you decide where those licenses are required? I know I'm also the regulatory officer and industry liaison for Elixinol, which is a is a huge hemp extract company. And so keeping up, of course, with the bobbing and weaving, rapidly developing area of law and regulation in our, what I call mm -hmm. our 50 schizophrenic states, 47 right. of which, because we think Ohio is about to come on board, you know, has some type of law. How do you keep up with that rapidly developing area? Yeah, great question. So we do have a group that we've worked with, plus we have uh, an attorney on staff. And on top of that, I would say that I am a non-licensed, we'll say, hobbyist legal enthusiast. And so I do a lot of the, myself, I do a lot of staying on top of legislation and doing my sort of cursory, here's how I'm interpreting it, here's what's changing. And we do a lot of the lion's share of the work on the upfront. And then I pass that off to a legal team to basically say, yes, you're, you're absolutely right or no. This is why I have a degree in this and you don't because you're totally wrong. So <laughs> <laughs> awesome. it's a group effort. 
Indeed. No, it, it takes a village, uh, no doubt. But and so glad, of course, uh, you've got those types of folks on your team. So can you walk us through uh, an experience? A farmer has biomass and or a farmer mm-hmm. is about to grow biomass or about to grow hemp and they want to find a buyer. Can you walk us through what that experience would be like on the hemp exchange, a, a registration and how that process goes? Certainly. So the first step in any kind of verification is the most simple, and that's just getting them to the site, asking them for an email, having them pick a password, and then verifying that email address is is accurate. So we send them a an email and say, you know, click to verify this email. Very simple step, but it actually weeds out a bunch of garbage. So step one, verify your email address. From that point, you can look at what's on the marketplace. You can't interact with anything because you're not a verified business or a verified individual in any way, but you can at least see what the marketplace has to offer. From that point, if the farmer says, yeah, I I like what I'm seeing, I want a complete registration and list my biomass, there's a form that that is shown to them and sort of nags them every time they log in, hey, complete registration. If you want to interact on the system, you got to do this step. And it involves them filling out their information first name, last name, who they are, their business name, business address, and then give us any licenses that you have that are relevant to your business that will help us identify that you're a real business and that you can you can do these things that you're trying to do. So that's any kind of business license, IRS, FEIN, um, Secretary of State, Ag license, anything that proves that they are a business entity and their photo ID. So that all gets uploaded through the system and then it gets put into a queue where we have a manual process where an individual actually looks at this name, looks at the documentation, matches it up to make sure that it's all in sync, and then physically calls secretaries of state to ensure that the business license is real and that it's valid and that the person trying to interact with us can do so on behalf of that business. Often with with farmers, even sometimes we have situations where the person doing the work isn't necessarily the person that's licensed with the business. So then we go the extra mile saying, okay, we need a letter of affirmation saying that you're stating that you're authorized to do business on behalf of this entity, et cetera. So by the time we get all this stuff verified, we know that they're a real business. We know who they are. We have a photo ID of the individual that we've verified. It weeds out a lot of the nonsense, right? Because a lot of people that are intentionally trying to do harm, go ahead. No, I'm so sorry to interrupt. It's just, thank you. This is the level of due diligence that is so necessary in the industry. And and after 30 years, and of course, I was raised by a lawyer and had a dual career for 21 years in compliance and complex civil litigation. Brother, I'm just I'm just so grateful. That is exactly the level of due diligence that this industry needs. And for you to toe the line and have that as your process is just really impressive and necessary now. And I'm assuming a very similar process for the hemp processors, as it were, in terms of email verification, first step, and then the several layers of verification, including manual um, confirmation of the documentation that's been given. Same thing with the processors and the product manufacturers? Yeah, it's the same step. So as far as we're concerned, uh, you know, when we first were, were creating the product, we had this idea that you would I self-identify, I'm a farmer. And then we'd ask you all the farmer-specific mm-hmm. questions. Or I'm a processor. We'd ask you processor-specific questions. But we determined that at the end of the day, it's too difficult in this industry to pigeonhole any one company into any one persona because oftentimes uh, they do several things. Some farmers of do course. their own extraction. Some processors have their own biomass. Um, and, uh, you know, oftentimes even farmers will have, sometimes they'll wholesale uh, biomass on behalf of a friend that's a farmer that lives down the road. So instead of trying to identify who they are and then structuring um structuring the verification based on who they are. We structure the verification based on what they're doing. So everyone gets on the system in the same way, same registration process, same, they complete their business registration identically. We verify all that stuff the same way. What happens next is we don't further pester them for any kind of act state license uh, until they try to take an action. So for example, if you're trying to list biomass in Colorado, At that point, we'd say, hey, in order to do this, you need this license from Colorado and we don't have it on file for you. So you need to upload that now and we're not going to approve your product listing until we verify that this license is is accurate. If you're trying to purchase extract in certain states as a processor, you need certain licensure. So we determine where are you located? Mm -hmm. What are you trying to do? 
And we use our, our compliance matrix that we've built both manually and are updating daily that we've built, like I said, manually, and that's inserted into the system. And the system can then identify what licenses do you need to try to do what you're doing? And do you have those licenses already verified? And if you don't, again, they upload it and it's a manual process. We're now pretty much on a first name basis with every state ag department and state science departments in a couple of weird states to verify, hey, we've got, we've got this license. Is this real? No, this is fantastic. And I love that you're developing those relationships. And it also helps to build trust in the industry with those regulators and and those lawmakers who I'm sure you've made some phone calls to as well. And, you know, demonstrating our due diligence and demonstrating that we're working in partnership, the industry, the researchers, the regulators and the lawmakers to deliver on the promise of this amazing plant. Now, could you walk us through, so I'm verified, Mm -hmm. and let's say we've got a a pool of folks verified, as I'm sure you do, um, and now I actually want to do a deal. I have, let's say, and and, and you're doing these transactions through FDI-insured banking partners. Of course you are, and and what a tremendous uh, struggle that is, I'm sure, these days. Um, But walk us through, I want to sell a certain amount of biomass. It, I've delivered my COAs. It meets all of the specs for a buyer and I'm and there's an, a deal made. Or how is the deal made? How is the negotiation process made? And, and then if you could be on that, tell us then how is the money transacted? So what is the negotiation process and then the actual financial transaction? How does that work on your platform? So one quick step back that we didn't touch that I think is important. When you list a product, not only do we verify your state licensure, that you're able to sell that product, but we also require two things that are that are fairly unique. The first one is proof of life, and you know people people say, "Well, I require proof of life all the time," uh, but people fake this as well. They send pictures of stuff that they don't really have. <laughs> they send they videos of things they don't have. So what our system does is every product listing it generates a unique hash code. That hash code generates a QR code, and the individual trying to sell the product has to print off that QR code, physically take it to the product, take a picture of the QR code in front of the product and then send that to our system. Wow. Our system will match the QR code and say, yep, this, uh, this QR code matches this product. Uh, so that can't be faked and passed around. Uh, and then, they, then it will flag a human again to look at it and say, yep, they're trying to sell biomass and I see biomass in the background. That's what they're selling. So now we know they have physical access to the product. Um, which also weeds out a, a generous slew of individuals. And then lastly, the COA. You know, everyone requires a COA, but we take it a step further and we actually send the COA to the issuing lab and say, we need to verify that this is real or has this been faked? And labs are... Been- Chris, I just have to stop for a second. I really just have to stop for a minute. This is so fantastic to hear. I almost didn't want to ask that question. And it's so important. You've been around every block as of I... We have seen counterfeit COAs. I have seen mm-hmm. people get their own COAs back, Photoshop. Um, right. And so, of <laughs> course, you're calling to verify, as I have also sort of these uh, proof of funds, which is why I'm also asking about, of course, that transaction. So sure. I, I just had to stop you there because so my heart is filled right now and warm. Really, we are the, the stewards of this industry. And and when I read on your website, and as you know, people create websites, they can project to the world as if they are a just multi-million dollar corporation um, and mm-hmm. that they have all kinds of assets that they absolutely don't have. So when I see your website and it says, you know, the most trusted, everything, your, all of your processes and protocols that you're talking about right now really gives you the right to say that. This is really fantastic stuff. So I, I, again, thank you for letting me interrupt. It's just, I'm so enthusiastic yeah, about absolutely. it because you've thought of everything here and this is just so important and people need to have a positive experience and you're really creating that environment on your platform in, in such a tremendous way. So negotiate, uh, thank you for all of that. And now negotiation yeah, and then the transaction, how does it go down? Yeah, so once the product is listed and it's visible on the site, anyone can click on it. They can see the redacted COAs, um, so they know that the the profile matches their needs. They can see product pictures to get a good idea of what they're about to purchase. There's a button that says click to bid. So they click click to bid, 
And the window pops up and says, how much do you want to purchase of this lot? And what price are you willing to offer? Now, it's not an auction. The person that listed the product set the price that they wanted. But we know in this industry that someone says, I want $45 a pound. And someone may say, "Mm, I'm only willing to pay $43 a pound. It, It almost never is just cut and dry as the asking price. So... We built that into the system so someone could say, well, I, I want 100 pounds or 1,000 pounds or 10,000 pounds, and I'm only willing to pay $43 a pound. That information gets sent to the seller. The seller then can accept it, reject it, or counter. They could say, mm, I won't go lower than 44 and they send that offer back to the buyer. The buyer, again, can accept, reject, or counter. Now, they can counter as much as they want uh, until they find terms that they agree on. But once an offer is accepted... Oh, I should back up one step. Ms. Lawyer, you'll appreciate this too. Before you submit an offer and before you... Just a paralegal, but I appreciate it. Okay, paralegal. (laughs) Still, I think the (laughs) the appreciation will be there. Whenever you submit an offer or you accept an offer, you are required to read through the terms of use and, and provide an e-signature through the application that adheres to the e-sign act. So you're basically fulfilling your contract right there that, yes, I agree, I have this product and I'm actually going to deliver it. Or I agree, I have the funds and I'm actually going to purchase it. I have a responsibility to do that. So once, once something is accepted, first thing we do is we get a hold of the buyer. And we say, all right, buyer, um, you have an accepted offer. You've purchased X amount of quantity of whatever for X amount of dollars. Here is the total that you owe for that. And here is the bank account that you need to wire those funds to. And you have 72 hours to perform that task. So instead of trying to do the manual effort of checking due diligence on proof of funds and, and stuff like this, it's much easier just to say, look, if you, if you say you're going to buy this product within the next week's time, you actually have to pay for it. It's not rocket science. Uh, you either have the funds or you don't. So if, if they, they wire within 72 hours, those funds go into our FDIC bank account. And at that point, we say, all right, now this is a real deal. We know that it's not just a tire kicker. They fulfilled their end of the purchase agreement. Now we contact the seller. And we say, seller, we've captured funds. We need to schedule shipment. And they say, great. And we work out a time that works for our third-party logistics company and the buyer and the seller. And we schedule shipment. Um, Our third-party company has a lot of experience moving cannabis um, specifically. And we have kind of some unique arrangements with them. Uh, They will show up on site. They'll do a visual inspection based on description of products, based on pictures, uh, make sure it looks like it's supposed to look like. They will weigh the product to make sure what they're picking up is the right amount of product for what they're supposed to be grabbing. Uh, And then they will do a sample. They'll grab a representative sample the best they can from every single container, whether it's a super sack or a five-gallon bucket or mason jars, whatever it is. They'll grab a sample. They'll video themselves taking those samples. They'll send all of that to us for storage and cataloging. And then they'll drive to uh, the, the buyer. They deliver the product to the buyer. Buyer signs off on it. Yeah, this looks like what it's supposed to be. They drop it off. The buyer now has seven days from that time to do their own due diligence to make sure the product is real. It's, you know, that it's actual biomass or that it's actual isolate, not powdered sugar. Uh, so from that point, if they discover any problems, they send it off to their own lab, lab test. They come back and say the CBD percent's way off or there's actually no CBD in this. It's powdered sugar. Uh, then we can arbitrate. And at this moment, we have the funds, we have samples, and we're in a very strong position to be a fair, neutral party to arbitrate between the two. Uh, and having been in complex civil litigation and compliance, you're building this chain, you know, that is creating exactly the record that would need to be created if in the unlikely event, and, and A, things happen, and B, I'm sure once in a while something sneaks in there. Sure. You know, that there, there is a, a perfect document and, and evidence and chain of custody trail uh, so that a matter could uh, judiciously be arbitrated or mediated in the event of a dispute. It is so impressive. And, and I need you to know, Chris, I am simply not an easy woman to impress. It's not an easy <laughs> industry, as you well know. It is mm-hmm. it's fraught with, unfortunately, not only folks who are seeking to defraud intentionally, but also, folks who just don't know any better. And so you're sort of, I don't know if we're allowed to say this, and I'll come up with something else if we can't, but your bullshit radar, so to speak, isn't going off because the person <laughs> right. speaking to you really believes everything they're telling you. And they just don't know what they're talking about, and they've been sold a bill of goods. 
This is so impressive, Chris, every step of the way, not just from my hemp industry leader perspective, from my straight up compliance and complex civil litigation, professional legal support and expert witness career. Wow. That's what I have to say about the hemp exchange. Uh, I mean, really, really great stuff. And, And so when it does come to your, you have experienced your third party delivery and logistics folks have experience. And it sounds like They've also had experience even within maybe the medical or adult use space in transportation. So which brings, Indeed. and correct me if I'm wrong with that assumption. Yeah, so that brings a whole nother level of sophistication and challenges and corners to see around. And I think that's another issue with any new industry, but we're, we're not a new widget industry here. We're talking about an agricultural and industrial revolution of epic proportions happening right here in our lifetime. And so to be able to see around those corners and to have that breadth of experience is just such an asset to the community and to the industry. Chris, I'm just beside myself and, and I'm, I'm really wanting to talk to you more even offline and, and how can we <laughs> help together. I'm beside myself too, listening to you two guys. Holy cow. <laughs> well, is, I really appreciate I all the positive I, feedback and you know, we're, we really are trying to be a force for good in the industry and stabilize the supply chain because the bottom line is with the projected growth, we can't get there if the supply chain is as fractured and untrusted and wrought with fraud as it is currently. So our our primary goal is very simple, stabilize the supply chain. So product manufacturers making consumer goods can be free to make those goods and be able to source the material. And that's true for processors and that's true for farmers. Farmers should be able to just farm. They shouldn't have to be sales experts and have a complete legal team for due diligence. And like you said, they shouldn't have to have bullshit radars. They should be able to just farm their product and sell their product. And without those farmers, we have nothing. They are everything. They are the ones who get the seeds into the ground. They are everything. So just, wow, to be providing these solutions, what a tremendous good deed you're doing. And man, am I going to be watching Hemp Exchange. I'm going to have all of Chris's information on the website. So if anybody wants to reach out to Chris directly, we'll have all of his information on there. Of course, we have Joy's information on there. If anybody, Chris, congratulations. Uh, just, Thank you. And, and Joy, congratulations that. on an awesome interview. That was so yeah, well absolutely. done. Very well Thank done. You, yeah, very well done. Both of, you, both, both of you guys, congratulations. Thank you. You've inflated my ego quite well, so I'm going to have to go home probably and take the rest of the day off. Otherwise, I'll I'll be too cocky for the rest of the day. You've earned it. Tell your wife how great you are when you get home. She'll solve that right away. Yeah, she'll fix that. Yeah, she'll fix that quick. (laughs) Well, Chris, let's let's make sure we have you on the show again as this thing progresses and keep it up. Yeah, we've got lots of interesting stuff coming out that I think would be also of high interest. And as we develop things that we can be public about, I'll I'll reach out to you and let you know. And I, I appreciate the opportunity again. Thanks for having me on the show. Well, thanks for being on the show. Good luck. (laughs) 